Notice what it says here. It says, all we like sheep have gone astray. The whole human race has left father's house like prodigal son and has gone down into the hog bin, and there we are. We're in need of redemption. We're in need of cleansing. Could I have an amen? amen. All we like have sheep have gone astray. Now notice, we have turned everyone, everyone. Everybody say everyone. Everyone. Everyone to his own way. See, that's the sin of the human race. We have turned to our own way. He didn't necessarily cussing and lying and stealing and committing adultery and fornication and alternate lifestyles and all the wickedness in the world. That's not necessarily it. The root of it all is I want my way. We have turned everyone to his own way. Leave me alone, God. I want to do my thing. I want to live my life. I want to have my way. That's what iniquity means, rebellion against God. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord, in the midst of that, hath laid on Jesus the rebellion of us all. All of our sins and iniquities. The Bible said, like a sheep led to the slaughter. John the Baptist looked at Jesus and said, Behold the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the world. He is the Lamb of God. And when he died on that cross, all of the human race that had rebelled against God, that had, had said, I want my own way, that rebellion and that sin, Jesus took it all. And in that darkness, he paid the price that you and I might be saved. You and I might be redeemed. You and I might be, have eternal life. And all you have to do is stop doing your thing and do God's thing. All you have to do is stop going your way and go God's way. Amen. See, I lived for 17 years doing my thing. I want to do my way. I came out of the nightclubs and, and on my way home doing my thing, 2 o'clock in the morning. But 2 o'clock in the morning, I realized my thing wasn't working. I mean, it wasn't working. I didn't have any peace. I didn't have any joy. I was on my way to hell, thank God. And when I made the decision to make Jesus the Lord of my life, what I was saying is I'm going to stop doing my thing and do God's thing. I'm not going to have my way. I'm going God's way. Amen. Amen. And I got news. I've done my way and his way, and his way is better. Amen. Amen. His way is, way is far better. <laughs> notice, notice now. All of us need a substitute to be saved. Now notice what it says here. Surely he hath carried our sicknesses and carried our pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. See, God smote him. The Romans didn't kill him, and the Jews didn't kill him. God preordained that he would be nailed to that cross. Now notice, but, verse 5, he was wounded for... Who's transgression? See, transgression means that you've broken the law of God. You stepped out of boundary. But Jesus was wounded for all the times you've ever transgressed the laws of God. You say, Brother Osteen, I'm guilty, guilty, guilty. Yes, but Jesus paid for your guilt. He was wounded for our transgressions. Not his transgressions, our transgressions. You say, I don't understand. That's too deep for me. You don't have to understand it. Just enjoy it. Amen. You know, when I go out to a, to a place, last night, for our 41st anniversary, telling everybody, we've been married 41 years, we went out and had a steak. Now, I know that's not the best food to eat, but, you know, once or twice in 41 years is all right. <laughs> but now, when that steak sat before me, I didn't say, uh, come here, waiter. Tell me about how this cow died. <laughs> Who shot her? Who cut her up? What kind of food did she eat? No, I am not want to know all of that. I don't understand all of that. I just want to eat my steak. So you don't have to understand all the theology of it. Just enjoy the eternal life that God has provided for you. <laughs> Amen. I tell you, I'm so glad I'm saved. I said, I'm so glad I'm saved. Yeah. Oh, I believe in prosperity. I believe we ought to have all of our needs met. I believe God wants us to prosper. But listen, if we had to walk barefooted and ragged throughout all of our life and we end up in heaven, we got it made. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. 
but I'm not content that me and my four are saved. I want to get all the world saved. I, I, I like that little man that came through here the other day. He was about 87 years old, and he got up here on the platform. He was from Florida. He said, I'm just passing through Houston on my way to heaven, and just want to find out who wants to go with me. Hallelujah. That's the way we ought to be. Amen. Say, I'm on my way to heaven. I want somebody to go with me. See, it said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our rebellion or iniquities, the chastisement of our peace. Listen, do you need peace today? Money won't give it. Drugs won't. You can't shoot it up, dip it up, smoke it up, work it up. But I'll tell you, Jesus brought it up. Amen. Amen. You can have peace. That's the most priceless thing in the world, to have peace with God and have every part of your body in tranquility because you know your sins have been washed away and you, you belong to Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 5, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We have peace with God. That's, that's marvelous. Listen, God has made peace by the blood of the cross. I got news for all you people here. Listen to me, listen. And you people, God is not mad at you. No, God is not mad at you. God loves you. God knows all about you and he still loves you. He's not mad at you. God made peace. He's been reconciled to the world. All he wants the world to do is to be reconciled to him. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. Could I have a amen? amen? Now notice, our sicknesses, our pains, our transgressions, and our iniquities, it was, it was a substitution. Somebody died in your place. I heard the story told years ago by somebody who wrote it in this way about Barabbas. When they brought Jesus out there, you know, to crucify him, Barabbas was in one cell and Jesus was in the other. And, and, you know, they didn't know what was going on outside. But Barabbas was supposed to die for his uh, murders. And he's down in that cell walking back and forth, walking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Oh, he's got to die today. I've got to die today. I'm going to be crucified today. I'm going to be crucified today. Uh, but, you know, we know the story out there. They said, you know, crucify Jesus and let Barabbas live and so forth. But he didn't, he didn't hear that necessarily. And he's down in there in that cell. And so finally close to the middle of the day or there, thereabouts, you know, they come. They, he, hear the, he hears the feet walking down. He said, this is it. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I'm Barabbas. I'm going to die. I've been sentenced to die. And they opened the cell door and said, Barabbas, you're free. He said, free. I'm guilty. Guilty of murder, sedition, insurrection. I'm guilty. Why do I go free? I'm supposed to die today. And they lead him up to the top of the, uh, of, uh, of the building there and point out toward Mount Calvary. And they say, you see that center cross? There's a man on there named Jesus. He died in your place. And that's what I want to take you today. I want you to take you up on the highest point I can get you and point to that place called Calvary. And I want you to see that cross where Jesus was. And I want to tell you, you don't have to die. You don't have to go to hell. Jesus died for you. He died for you. All he wants you to do is just simply say, Jesus, I accept the sacrifice. What's wrong with that? That's how to be saved. Jesus, I turn from my way. I accept what you did for me. I don't understand it all, but I believe it. I believe you died for my sins, my, my iniquities, my rebellions. Now, Jesus, I accept you as my substitute and my Savior, and I don't have any right to my life anymore. It's going to belong to you. Not my will, but yours be done. Now, I want you to know that Jesus will come into your heart and save you. And I want all you people who are saved to appreciate what he did for you, that your sins have been put away. And if somebody is reminding you of your sins, it's not God because God said, their sins and iniquities I will not remember. God chooses to forget. 
He doesn't remember when you serve the devil. He doesn't remember the curse words. He doesn't remember the infidelity. He doesn't remember the looseness in morals. God said, their sins and iniquities I will not remember. Thank God he doesn't remember. All he remembers is that you made Jesus the Lord of your life. Jesus in the law, in the Psalms, and in the prophets. There he is. 700 years it was predicted he would come and do this and thank God we're on this side of the cross he did come he was born he did live he did minister he did go to that cross he did die that death he did go into that grave he did conquer Satan but thank God ain't no grave gonna hold his body down he came out of that grave and he went back to heaven and he sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. But before he left, he said to all of his believers, and it's come down to us today, go into all the world and tell this good news to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And they went everywhere. And that's what we're doing. We're going everywhere preaching the gospel. And we're so glad that you tuned in today. Now, you've heard about what Jesus did for you. That's, that's just... The real fundamental facts of the gospel. You need a savior. Somebody's going to have to pay for your sins. And you'll pay for them if you don't let Jesus be your savior. Why spend eternity in hell when you've got a paid ticket to heaven? Amen. 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 You say, well, I, I don't understand all this religion. Well, you don't have to understand religion. Just say, God, I want you to pray this prayer. Put your hand on your heart. Audience here, be still. God, I've been doing my thing. I've been living my way, having my will in my own life, running my own life. But today, God, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven and I want peace to come to me. I want all my wicked sins to be washed away in the blood of Jesus. Now, Jesus, here I am. I've heard about you today. You're alive from the dead. I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to be my Lord and my master. I accept you right now and I make you the Lord of my life. You know, folks, that's all you can do. Just surrender and make him the Lord of your life. The gift of God, the gift of God, it's a gift, he is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, thank God you prayed that prayer, and God heard you. If we don't see you here, we'll see you in heaven.